And uh, the second thing is the patient when they treat treatments with Ayurvedic medicine. The first importance is to see that the patient, uh, the mental agitations comes down, the anxiety comes down. Otherwise, the patient will not be in a receptive mood to accept the treatment yeah. and enjoy the benefits or absorb the benefits of the treatment. Basically, the Ayurvedic medicines try to break down the anxiety level. We call uh, in the spiritual uh, parlance, we call this as improving the sattva instinct. Huh? There are the three types of uh, characters which we have, you know, the gunas we say. One is tamas, rajasic, and then tamas, I mean sattva. Sattva is a pure uh, blissful stage. When you get this stage, you become more controlled, more peaceful, and you are able to absorb all the activities in their pure form and in the most comfortable way. So Ayurvedic medicines try to bring more of sattva. That's why you, when you come to an Ayurvedic hospital, you see the patients, um, they are all very calm, relaxed, comfortable. The people who are working there are also very, very simple, I will say. Uh, because maybe simple is the only word which I use because life is simple. So you see the real life when you come there in its most simpler form. It is because Ayurvedic medicines, Ayurvedic treatments aim at bringing normalcy, the normal health. So our focus is not to take the problem as a big problem, but try to see what is wrong and why this wrong has come. So what is the balance and which is the imbalance? So if the imbalance is corrected, you come back to the normal balance. Very simple thing. So for which we have, uh, you know, different methods and we try to define people into three, three types of personalities like Vada type, Pitha type and Kapha type and then try to um, work on this, uh, the, the body types, the personality types and then treat the problems. So the problem we always believe is, is because of the, the imbalances in the personality type, in the body types. So which, if it's corrected, the problem is corrected. So this is, this is one way uh, the Ayurveda works. So this particular organization has uh, this commitment because they have these traditional roots with Ayurveda. So uh, as Dr. Nambi was telling me earlier during our personal discussion, the medicines, even when we make the medicine, we always think about the patient. It is not that we think about the market. When we get patients from overseas, the overseas patients, they would like to know always in advance, how much is the expenses. So once I wrote to them, you know, we do not know what is your problem. Normally when you come here, we know, and then we'll have to give you a treatment. And you'll have to pay just for the, actually, what is the actual cost of the treatment. No, no, no. Please let us have, you tell us in advance. You can make it as a package. We will pay you in advance. But nothing more when we come there. Okay. So most of the Ayurveda centers here, they have a package rate. Right? Yes. The idea is, yes. It becomes easy for the patient to pay, yes. but uh, then you may lose somewhere, but you will make up somewhere. Yes. Because when the patient comes, the treatment which is selected for the patient may be sometimes costlier yes. than, yes, it more can could be more more could be more expensive. And uh, so when the patient comes, sometimes I used to sit to the chief physician, he will look at the patient and uh, for the patient sometimes the, the treatments he prescribes are very expensive. We just do it. Why I'm trying to say is, he does not ask me what is the packing rate. He looks at the patient, the problem. And for him, he, he gives the treatments, that's all. He prescribes the treatment, that is over. This cannot happen unless you have the commitment. So similarly, making the medicines everywhere, you need the commitment. I think this is there in every, every branch of medicine. Maybe because Ayurveda is traditional, um, you are made to give more focus on this particular aspect. I think even the Indian uh, Indian culture always says, you know, the, the first mantra which he says, Loga Samastha Suhino Bhavandu. This is the thing first we pray in the morning. Loga Samastha Suhino Bhavandu means, let the whole, whole world be happy. So the idea is, if the whole world is happy, you are happy. We never say, oh God, let me be happy. We never say this. Always we talk about the universe, we talk about the others. And we talk about, we thank the sun, we thank the moon, we thank the planets, we thank Agni, we thank Indra, we thank the earth for giving us all this. So it's always thanking the others because without the others you are not here. You have to thank the other fellow humans, the others around you, the whole universe which is surrounded for allowing you to exist. Exactly. So it is never self-centered. 
I think this is the main focus of uh, uh, the Indian culture, you know, recorded as a Sanadana Dharma. So it has to reflect in Ayurveda also. So this keeps us going. <laughs> so very simply. Is it also possible that Kerala is so famous for Ayurveda because you get all the herbs here in the mountains? Is that part of the reason? Yes. You don't have to import anything. Yes, you're very right. I think this is this is one very very important factor because now we have a lot of uh, lot of uh, uh, questions about uh, purity of the herbs, especially uh, metal metallic impurities, heavy metal impurities are there, and uh, in Kerala there is one more uh, difference. Is uh, in Kerala our Ayurvedic preparations are um, you can say almost 99% are you know, herbal uh, oriented. If you go to the other parts of India, there is another system where they use the metals and minerals also, but they have a special purification process. And so the metals and minerals which are used are absolutely safe for use. But in Kerala, we don't follow this system because we have enough herbs. So uh, still, there is a doubt whether there can be any metallic impurities because they are, uh, I mean, procured from different places. Where there can be even chemical impurities, and uh, there are a lot of impurities. Uh, but for us, we have a lot of flora and fauna, and we also have herb collectors, traditional herb collectors. In the villages we have uh, women who do this. Uh, I think over the decades, over the centuries, they have been doing this as part of their life. This is one earning for them. So they know to identify the herb. Now you don't have to go to the, they don't have to go to the textbooks to see why, whether this is the right plant. Because they have been doing this for, you know, centuries. So they just go there and pluck the, uh, the right herb, collect it, and bring it to us. So because of this herb collection, I think this exists only in Kerala, because this practice was prevalent and it continued. That's one of the reason. It must have been there in all other states also. Maybe, you know, somewhere they lost it, that's all. So this has helped us now. So we are, even now we are able to get all the herbs from the wild, which does, you can almost say it's more than organic. It, it, it retains all the natural principles. But a time may come soon if we are going to have so much of pharmaceutical companies coming in Ayurvedic industry, it is going to be a big problem because now uh, when we made medicines, it was only meant for the patients. Now Ayurvedic nutraceuticals have come and Ayurvedic cosmetics have come. So there is a wide use of this uh, herbs because Kerala has limited space. So maybe in Tamil Nadu and many other places, they have in organic farming, they have started thinking about herbal gardens. But we feel that it may not affect to a great extent because one another uh, reason is the cosmetics and nutraceuticals they go for the uh, the concept of going for the extracts. They like to take the active principle, so they will not need so much of herbs. But what we make here in Kerala is not we don't go for the active principle. We go for the holistic uh, way of preparing things. Uh, for example. What we do here in manufacturing is the normal cooking process, like uh, we steam them, boil them, we roast them, and um, you know, uh, we take the, uh, I mean, uh, we take the decoctions out of them, and we mix them with uh, ghees, and then make uh, almost nutraceutical products, uh, like our lehias, which we, the popular one is chavanaprash. It's just like a food. So they're all made as per the normal cooking methods. That is why when you have this ivory preparations are made, when you take them, there are absolutely no side effects. Even if you uh, take more, the, the maximum you can have is a, a indigestion. Yes, that's all. And uh, because they are in the most natural form. So this is different from the taking the active principles. Because we believe the, when you try to take the active principle, again, you are trying to make life as compartments. The treatment as a compartment. I'm just giving an example. Um, there is a product called as Brohexine. This is taken from a herb called as Adatoda Vasika. In Tamil, it is called as Ada uh, Todai. It's Ada Todai, which is widely used in India uh, for bronchial problems. And then they found this is effective. Some of the pharmaceutical companies wanted to use it. So then they found they wanted to find out what is active principle. Then they found this Brohexine. And so this tablet is a tablet and liquid is being promoted now. And the uh, indications are uh, bronchospasm, bronchiectasis and etc. etc.